There are a lot of great ideas out there on how to reduce maternal and child mortality. A lot of things have been tried. Some have been effective, many have not been. And so we're trying to give policymakers a clear, concise idea of the causal evidence around a menu of interventions that they can choose to go out and reduce the number of deaths of, of mothers and children around the world. Since 1990, maternal mortality rates have fallen by 47%. But the Millennium Development Goals established by the broader development community, the United Nations, the World Bank, and others, is to reduce that number by three quarters. So there's still a long ways to go, and we didn't make it. The biggest problem in countries with limited resources is not that we don't know what to do. The bigger problem is, how do we do it? So that's why in this report, we only look at those interventions that actually occurred in a developing country. So there's a track record of this type of intervention actually works in a context like yours. Skilled birth attendance is the primary indicator for the fifth millennium development goal. And we believe that if you increase skilled birth attendance, reductions in maternal and neonatal mortality must follow. So we investigated that. And we found that there aren't any hard, good, high quality, causal impact evaluations out there that can definitively show that increasing skilled birth attendance alone reduces maternal or neonatal mortality. What we do find is that by improving the level of information and training that both mothers have and the birth attendants have, by doing those together and in a localized community way, now we do see a result in reducing maternal mortality and improving the likelihood of survival for babies who are born. For neonatal mortality, we're talking about how to save the lives of children who are less than a month old. In addition to the clinical interventions that, that tend to work, there is also really nice evidence that improving the home environment can be critically important, specifically the knowledge and information that the mother has. And that can happen through community-based home care programs of training the mother how to take care of her newborn. It can happen through home visits. And improving the levels of education for girls can years later have really robust effects in reducing the likelihood of death for her eventual children. So we see that community health training campaigns are, are really effective because those start to get at the level of changing norms of how things are done within the community. For kids under one and under five, we found some surprising results. It's not just the health sector, although that can be important. It's also the environment around the child. So education levels, sanitation, improved water quality, even governance, specifically representation of women in government, can all help in reducing the likelihood of death. We've gone to great lengths to collect all of the good causal evidence around what works to reduce maternal and child mortality. We can say with some certainty which interventions are likely to work because they have worked in various contexts around the globe. We see that interventions that improve education for both mothers and for health workers goes a long way to reducing maternal and neonatal mortality. For infant and under five mortality, interventions that affect the child's environment, pollution, education of their parents, water and sanitation, and governance are all really effective in reducing the likelihood that they might pass before their time. We want to see these children grow up and move from surviving to thriving.